Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Luca Salvatici. I am uh, Deputy Director of the Department of Economics at Roma Tre University, and I'm in the board of the Centro Procidoria. Um, today, I'm here with uh, Lionel Fontanier. Lionel Fontanier is uh, uh, a famous scholar in the field of international economics and is a professor at the Paris School of Economics, Université Paris 1, Panthéon-Sorbonne. Uh, you will know more about his background uh, during the keynote lecture that will take place on the 10th of June at the Department of Economics in Roma 3. And this is an international work workshops organized by the uh, Jamboni project, and the title is European Trade Policy and Global Value, Value Chains. And uh, we asked Lionel to deliver the keynote lecture on, uh, on Friday the 10th uh, at noon, uh, and uh, he chose the topic. And the topic is going to be carbon border adjustment and value chains. Now, the value chains, uh, of course, are part of the title of the workshop, but the choice of the carbon border adjustment may seem to someone quite a technical uh, uh, topic. Uh, so perhaps you want to uh, explain a little, Lionel, uh, why did you choose this topic for the lecture? Thanks. Thank you, Luca, for this uh, nice introduction and for the invitation as well. So, uh, to, to, to motivate the title of this talk, uh, let's start uh, with something which is very much in the air, with something that everybody knows. So, when we try to connect value chains, trade, environment, so the usual approach is to say, okay, we have the carbon footprint of the consumption of a given country, or let's say the carbon footprint of the consumption in Europe. And so the evidence, statistically, as you know, is that the carbon footprint of the consumption is above what we call the national inventories. And the national inventory is, you know, the carbon which is emitted during the production process uh, within the country. And so why is it so? And why is it that the carbon, the carbon footprint of consumption is rather stable over time, while the national inventories in Europe are decreasing? And the reason is that the difference between the two is the carbon content of your imports. And so the problem for Europe uh, is that if we, you want to have a, a mitigation policy, which is efficient, you have to tackle this carbon content of imports. And this is where the global value chains enter into, uh, in, into, the, into the picture. So the national mitigation policies are inefficient to curb global emissions just because of the carbon content of imports and just because of uh, the interplay between the policy that you adopt and the presence of global value chains. And in order to explain this into details, uh, I will uh, try to uh, quantify what are basically uh, the uh, elements that we are considering here. So the question that we address is, can we fix this? And again, we have an increasing uh, you know, importance of the carbon content of imports. Can we fix this? What are the consequences of this fix due to the presence of GVCs? So this is basically what we're going to talk about uh, the, the tenth. And so the, the, the background indeed, uh, you know this, is the EU commitments, the Paris Agreement, the Fit for 55 package. So this ambitious target of mitigation, this which is currently discussed between the European Commission, the European Council, and in between the European Parliament these days. So this is exactly this that we're going to uh, address. And uh, the centerpiece of this discussion is what is called the European Trading Scheme. So a, a scheme in which, you know, you trade emission quotas that are emitted in order to respect a certain cap. And you have a price for these quotas, which is generally considered as the price of carbon in Europe. And so the price is determined by the interplay of a certain cap so which is the supply, which is decreasing over time, and the demand, which corresponds to the production of, you know, uh, products that are intensive in carbon and that need these emission quotas. So let's take a motivating example to see why it's so important for 
the economic policy. So I will try with something that everyone can understand. So in France and possibly in Italy, so the government is subsidizing the purchase of electric cars. So as an individual, as an household, I can purchase an electric car and I will be reimbursed by the government uh, of a certain amount. And so the problem is that the enemy of the electric cars is the weight. So uh, the problem is that they are batteries, they are very heavy, and so this makes these electric cars inefficient. And so in order to fix this, what uh, the car makers are doing is that they are producing electric cars with a body which is in alu, in aluminium, or wheels that are in aluminium, etc. And so the problem is that European producers of cars, if they purchase aluminium in Europe, they will be charged a carbon price on aluminium, and this is very high. While if they import this aluminium parts from China, they won't be charged on this. And so this is, this is the trick. And so the carbon footprint of your electric car is very different from what you could imagine. This is not so ecological in a sense, because when you subsidize electric cars, you subsidize also, you know, the country that's going to burn coal in order to produce uh, to produce aluminium that is within your car. So this is basically the, the policy uh, that we, we have to address. We have to quantify this. And in order to quantify this, I will take in my presentation elements of a joint work that I did with Cecilia Bellora recently, where we quantify uh, the fix that has been imagined by the European Commission, which is called CBAM, so the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism that you just mentioned, Luca. And so what we find, this is a teaser, so I, I will not tell you extensively what we find. What we find is that it is working, but not so well. And the reasons why it's not so well working is that GVCs are present. So these are complex mechanisms, and these mechanisms are associated with the presence of intermediate consumptions, like the aluminium wheels of your cars, of your electric cars. So these are the kind of issues that you have to tackle. So from a policy uh, perspective, this is naturally quite complex, but when it comes to the modeling of this, this is indeed uh, rather complex, and this is uh, what we do. And I will show you what the outcome of all this is. So what is the problem at the end of the day uh, that we will uh, address? The problem is that imports of final products in the uh, European Union will not be subject to the CBAM. So what will be subject to the CBAM is only, uh, you know, equivalent of ETS products. And so uh, when you import a given product from China, like the wheels, so the carbon which is embedded into the production of aluminium which is used to produce wheels in China is not taxed. While if you purchase the wheels in Europe, this is taxed. Can we fix this? Yes and no. And this is the problem that is currently discussed between the Council, the Commission and the Parliament. Yes, because in principle, and this is the kind of stuff that you do, uh, Luca, you could compute the indirect carbon content of any product and tax it. But the problem is that this is a very theoretical perspective because in the practical life, when a product is arriving at the customs, the custom officer does not know this. And so the custom officer won't call you every day, look at, to ask what is the carbon content of this stuff coming from China or India. So yes, but. And so uh, another possible uh, direction uh, for making progress is to make sure that non-EU countries also price the carbon that they emit when they produce. So the thing would be to make sure that India, China, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, would also price the, the, the carbon. And so you see that it is again a very theoretical solution because when it comes to discussing with these countries, indeed these countries have not really decided to do so, or at least not at the same level as in Europe. So we have three solutions on the table, and this is the three solutions that you have read in, in the newspapers. One is the CBAM now, 
And let's see what happens. So this is the solution which is examined by the European Commission or pushed by the European Commission. Then there is a second solution which is in the air, which is in, on the table, which is the club of countries collaborating on reducing their emissions. And this is the German proposal uh, because, as you know, the, the, we currently have a German presidency of the G7. And within this presidency, the Germans have pushed this uh, notion of club. And there is a third solution on the table that has been also to consider, which is the carbon price floor. And this is a solution which is put, pushed by the International Monetary Fund. And the idea is to have exactly as for international taxations of firm multinationals, an agreement, you know, at the multilateral level, where we decide on a minimum uh, price for, for carbon. So it could be, for instance, $25 uh, uh, in uh, developing economies. It would be 50 in countries like China in emerging economies, and it would be 75 in countries like Europe or something like this. So these are the three solutions in the air, and uh, we will discuss while uh, the GVC, uh, you know, are uh, somehow endangering, endangering the, the three solutions. So this is about uh, the, the, the discussion that we will have on the 10th. Thanks, Thanks. Renan. I think that uh, more people will may decide to, to attend. Let me remember that it will take place uh, at the Department of Economics, Roma 3, on Friday, June the 10th at noon. And uh, I really look forward to that. Uh, just let me remind uh, everybody that uh, we are talking about tariff uh, as part uh, of the solution in this case and not of the problem, which is quite something new. And I think that uh, this is what makes it even more uh, interesting. Thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, we look forward to meet you in Rome.